This house was chosen as a renovation project for a number of reasons. When the client originally came to us, they were really looking for a short timeline. Our strategy on this build was, you know, how do we deliver a house in less than 12 months? The IDP is really important for us because we want to make sure that all the components of the build all fit together. For this house, we're targeting CHBA's net zero renovation label. One of the first things they wanted is they wanted a net zero house. The, the thermal performance of the house was such that we could put enough solar panels on the roof that would accommodate the energy needs for the house for the entire year. And so from the earliest design stage, and this comes back to the integrated process that we used, was to make sure that the architect's team was in sync with that goal of energy efficiency. Air tightness is a really critical and key component when designing the home, not just for when the home is built. So if we have a good relationship with the builder and we have good confidence that that builder can achieve a low air tightness score, we're able to use that in our energy modeling. From the very earliest stages of design, we looked for a way to fast track a project that could start in January and be finished in December. And the easiest way to do that initially was to look at keeping the original foundation and the original first floor framing because that would save us three or four months in our construction timeline. And then as we looked at a cost benefit of doing new versus building on the existing foundation and footprint of the house, there were some significant cost savings to be had there as well. One of the only ways we knew that we were going to address the timeline set by our client was prefabrication. All the exterior walls, all the interior walls were all prefabricated in February in our panel shop here in Whistler. And so what that did for us is uh, the shell of the building was assembled in about a week and a half as opposed to you know, three to four months. You know, what's the balance between the thermal performance of the house and the mechanical systems that we need? So one of the great new tools we have today, uh, which was developed by Anarcan, it's a tool that we can use to measure the embodied carbon of our builds. Of course, carbon is measured in two different ways. We have operational carbon, so that's the amount of carbon that the house would emit through heating and cooling. The other bigger question for us these days is the embodied carbon for this particular project, wanted to get an idea of the embodied carbon if they were to completely knock the house down, dig up the slab and build a brand new house versus what they did. It managed to keep a few walls and not dig up the slab. Out of the process of that embodied carbon calculator, they were able to cut their embodied carbon by half, by 50%. With a renovation, it can be challenging when you're doing the, you know, the design and the energy modeling because we're dealing with some older parts of the building that might not have been insulated like we'd like, for instance, for not having insulation under the slab. So I have to make up for that somewhere else. Possibly have to put more insulation, better windows elsewhere in the home. I think what's really exciting about this project is that we're demonstrating that you can take an older building. Not only can you rebuild it and reimagine that building from its original use, but we can also, in a very effective way, without an enormous increase in cost, actually deliver a house that not only can produce as much energy as it uses, but also will significantly benefit the homeowners in terms of their life experience within the house.